The legal information presented on In Legal Terms is meant to provide general information about the topics discussed and is not necessarily the opinion of Mississippi Public Broadcasting. The information conveyed does not create any type of attorney-client relationship. Please consult an attorney provider before making any decisions about your specific legal questions. This is In Legal Terms on MPB Think Radio. We are so glad that you've joined us today. We're going to talk about uh, what do you wish laws people would abide by? Or, you know, what do you think would be enforced more? Professor Gershon, let's go with you first. Hello. Good morning. How are you? And I uh, hope you had a good weekend. And by the way, I got to give a shout out to the Ole Miss Rebels baseball team and how well they're doing in the College World Series. So uh, it's exciting for everybody in the state. Um, but um, yeah, it, this is kind of a summer vacation topic. You know, we, we it, today's the first day of summer, and uh, it's kind of nice to let the listeners weigh in. But I'll start with one. And this is a simple one. Whereas, I mean, this is one that I, you know, I wish everybody would do. It's not hard to do, and that's using turn signals. And there are uh, studies that say that that using turn signals prevents accidents and save lives. Um, in fact, there's a study conducted by the Society of Automotive Engineers that shows that nearly two million accidents a year are caused by drivers' failure to use a turn signal. And so, you know, that's that's just a simple thing to do. So if you're out on the road listening, you know, make sure you, you actually give somebody warning when you're shifting lanes, and that's usually when uh, it happens. You know, the uh, uh, turn signal use is not enforced by police as much as speeding is, but that same report said that speeding causes actually fewer accidents than than, uh, than uh, lack of turn signal use. And I will say, as, a, as someone who runs outside, um, it is really dangerous sometimes when, when a car is turning and doesn't signal, and they turn right in front of you. You know, I'm happy to try to work with cars, but if I, I got to know what they're doing, and when they abruptly turn in front of you as you're on a side, you know, crossing, as you're crossing the sidewalk over a driveway or whatever, um, it would be nice to have that information. And one last pet peeve. This is the one. This is my personal pet peeve. I'm going to say this is that um, I, it, it drives me crazy when somebody abruptly gets into the left turn lane and then puts their signal on because at that point it's cosmetic okay once you're in the left turn lane everybody knows that that's what you're doing but it's getting over there that you need to put your signal on so I, i've had my rant for today i'm you know a crotchety old man and, and that is uh something i think would be uh helpful but especially for pedestrians bikers um and other cars it's just you know what you're doing but they don't and giving them a heads up will prevent a lot of accidents Let's go to hear what some of our listeners think. Let's go to Alabama and speak with Greg. Greg, we've call, we're glad you've called in, too, in legal terms today. We hope lots of folks call in this morning. What, uh, what do you think laws that, laws that are people should abide by more or you think should be enforced better? Well, i got to say, I don't know what the laws actually are against, uh, you know, defacing the American flag, but... I, I, I drive all over Mobile County down here in Alabama for, for, for work and driving for work right now. And um, I just see a lot of uh, those black flags or those dark blue flags that are definitely definitely not the red, white, and blue. Uh, I fly a flag uh, proudly in my front yard. It's actually a flag uh, that flew over the Capitol. Uh, it was gifted to me uh, by Barack Obama. Um, through uh, Representative Jeff Miller uh, up to the 9th District over in Florida. My dad used to live there, and he passed away in 2014, and he sent me a really nice uh, framed uh, uh, flag, and uh, that flew over the Capitol, and also a, a very nice uh, letter that stated, you know, thanking my dad for his service in World War II and Korea. And uh, it's just, it's very important to me to, to fly that flag and preserve it and take care of it. Um, but at the same time, uh, I've got neighbors, people around the area where I live that have uh, expletives against our current president and, and vice president and don't tread on the flags that aren't the actual don't tread on these flags. They've augmented and changed them, as well as the aforementioned uh, American flags that are, are simply not the, the red, white, and blue, and 
Uh, I know that there's U.S. code against uh, defacing the flag, and there's uh, proper folding of the flag and, you know, proper disposal uh, things that people seem to know about. But uh, it just seems like there's a proliferation of these uh, uh, terrible flags, I think. And uh, I just wonder if there's anything that could be done about it or, or that should be done about it, I suppose. Well, Greg, you've just given us an idea for our maybe July 5th show, uh, all about laws on, on flags. You know, I was walking my dogs just the other day and went past a neighbor's house, and she had American flag shoved in the trash can. And I uh -huh. I called her and said, hey, uh, it just happens that on the, the 4th of July weekend, my church, the, the Boy Scouts are having a... Uh, before the fireworks are having a flag burning ceremony, a flag retirement ceremony. Can I, ha I you know, I don't want to dig through your garbage, but can I take that? And she said, oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, I'll have it on the, the back porch table. So, yeah, I think a lot of folks, I don't know. Everybody has, has different ideas. Uh, Professor Gershon, do you have a comment about flag law? Well, that's a, it's a great comment. I think it's a matter of respect, but but also, you know, this is really, in my memory, which is a, a, a long one, you know, since the 60s and people, you know, sewing flags on blue jeans and things like that. You know, there's also, I suppose, the argument that it is a matter of uh, free speech. And so, um, you know, that, that we, we always have to balance those those thoughts. I think, you know, um, but I really appreciate those comments. And, uh, you know, it, it would be great if we could be respectful of uh, the flag and respectful of each other and each other's opinions. Um, that, I think, would make our country a, a much better place. Yeah, when you have the Olympics, or especially I've noticed it with track meets, uh, the, if it, the American will be, after they finish running, someone gives them a flag to drape around. And I get that they're trying to be patriotic, but that's, that's not good flag etiquette. Greg, thank you so much for calling in. We appreciate you starting our show. We're talking about what laws you think people should abide by more or what do you think should be enforced more let's go to durant and talk with jamie now jamie what's your comment or question about us uh, today good, good morning good, good morning. morning thank thank you very much for your program miss gill you have one of the greatest voices on radio i've ever heard but that's an aside i spoke to mr gershon one time i needed some uh i had to talk to him about something a very brief and he's one of the most polite, most gracious individuals that, uh, uh, for a person that didn't know him whatsoever, he, uh, he was very uh, cordial. And so I wanted to uh, pass that on to the public. Uh, he sounds the way he is, according to my experience. They, one, two quick bullets. One is passing people in the highway. <clears throat> The one thing I don't like is somebody passes me, gets in front of me, and then slows down. Now I'm tailgating. So, so if that person is flying and wants to go 100, that's fine, or 80 or 90, whatever it is. And he gets in front of me, and all of a sudden he slows down. If we have a wreck, I'm tailgating. So that's number one. Number two. But that's why I called about. But the last thing I'll say is the gentleman that called about the flag. Holy cow, what a subject. We could do 10 hours on this because the flag should be respected at all times. It's not freedom of speech, with all due respect to anybody who says burning it is freedom of speech. No, we can't uh, yell uh, a fire in a, crowded, uh, in a crowded theater. Well, so that flag is a united flag. It unites us. You can have lots of ways to express yourself protest, you know, peacefully, things like that, not like the, the riots of two years ago. I don't mean that. That's not protest. Those are riots. But, uh, but, 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 if, but burning the flag? No siree. And I love you, Miss Gill, for what you said about the trash can. Whenever I've had to retire a flag, I have stood by that flag, burned it in, a, in, a, in an appropriate manner, and I said a quiet, quick moment of silence for all those that have died for that flag and for you and I to have this phone conversation. So thank you very much, and I'll hang up and listen to any comments that you all have to say. Thank you. 
like I said, we could do a whole couple of hours on flags. Jamie, thanks for calling in. We are so excited about all the comments we've got. We've got another call we're going to go to. Let's go to Bay Springs and talk with Jerry. Jerry, thanks for calling in to In Legal Terms today. What do you think is a law people should abide by more or should be enforced better? Well, we have a problem lately, it seems, with subpoenas. And uh, I'm pretty sure that I couldn't get away with ignoring a subpoena. I'd probably have the uh, sheriff's department here at my house in pretty short order. And um, I'm also wondering uh, about contempt of court. Um, Is that more or less an open sentence? Uh, In other words, you stay in jail until you cooperate or until you're not in contempt? Or does it have limitations? So my two questions are, uh, is, is it possible to ignore a subpoena and get away with it? And what is the uh, length of time that you can be in prison for contempt? Thank you. I'll hang up and listen. Thanks, Jerry. Jerry, thank you. Those are great questions. And, you know, um, I, I will say this. I think, you know, the, uh, the question of subpoena, that it means, you know, literally comes from the Latin, which means under punishment under, you know, uh, so it, it is really uh, supposed to be enforceable. And, uh, and uh, that's so it's a great question. Uh, you know, ignoring a subpoena, you know, that's really, um, you know, it's an act that should be uh, not tolerated. The other thing um, is you asked about contempt. And I've heard of reporters, for example, um, and I don't know if there's a time limit because it would depend on, on jurisdiction, but I've heard of reporters who refuse to give up their sources, who have been held uh, in, in contempt and held in, in, in jail for long periods of time for that. Um, uh, there certainly should be some limits on that. And I, we should probably get a criminal law expert to, who would be able to, ex- to talk better about that. Um, that's not my area of expertise, but it's a, it's a great question. And, you know, contempt is something that uh, certainly we, we want to make sure that people don't uh, – act that way in the court setting or don't refuse to comply with court orders. And so we want to give the courts the power to enforce those laws, and contempt is one way to do that. Um, but, you know, uh, it's it's that's pretty harsh when you put somebody in jail because they won't give up their source, for example, if they're a reporter. We can certainly mine this show for all kinds of in legal terms topics, but now it's my turn. I want to say what sets me off, and so this is what set me off on Sunday. We're going out to eat, and Jay White will be on my side for this. Guys, this is not a huge parking lot. Guys parked right in the, right on the X, taking up four spots. Some I took a picture of it. I think that's going to be, I don't doesn't have the license plate, but it's, I think it's going to be on the podcast for this show. He just drove, and, you know, I and it wasn't a Lamborghini, let me tell you that. I get it. People don't want their cars dinged, but for Pete's sake, you're taking up four prime spots at the shopping center. That, that, uh, that made me grumpy. Well, I think that's a great one. And in fact, uh, you know, some of this all comes back to maybe the, the law that we should all enforce more is the, the golden rule, right? You know, because uh, you know, obviously that person would be bad, you know, if somebody else kept them from parking. Uh, they just were disregarding anybody else's feelings. And the golden rule really is not so much uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, but it's don't do unto others as you would not have done to you. Because there's some people who, who would have people do things to them that I don't want done to me. But, you know, so I think, you know, that would be one. And if we all did that and thought about the golden rule a little bit more, maybe we'd all be getting along a little bit better. We are discussing what laws we wish were more enforced or followed better. What are some of the laws that you wish people would follow more? I looked up, and this is kind of funny, um, I think attorneys ha- like to post little articles on their websites, and I found one from a, a Las Vegas attorney, and he had uh, the five most frequently broken laws, and we'll, we'll do this David Letterman order. Number five, pirating music. 
Ooh. So, uh, uh, you know, this is illegal because it's theft. You're taking away from the artist the revenue he or she would have gotten from the purchase. And pirating is still rampant on the Internet despite anti-pirating laws. Thank you for calling in to So, you know, we, Napster's done, but it's still possible. Yeah, we did. Well, too bad, uh, you know, my great colleague Stacy Lantain has moved on to New England, We're, but we can still have her uh, here uh, to talk about some of those high intellectual property issues. But that's a big, that's a big problem. Uh, number four was jaywalking. Jaywalking is what you do when you cross the street at a place not specifically designed as a crossing point for pedestrians. Who hasn't done that? Laws against jaywalking are in place for pedestrian safety, but they're perhaps the most ignored laws out there, and uh, this individual did say that people do get arrested for it. I, I lived in Chicago for a little while, and, you know, was, tri- was a pedestrian sometimes and was a car driver sometimes, and if you're a pedestrian, you just got to go for it, but I think you, you just got to go for it in the crosswalk. Number three, smoking marijuana. A shocking 52% of all the drug arrests in 2010 were related to marijuana, although it is semi-legal in some states. At a federal level, it's still classified as a Scheduled I narcotic and therefore is illegal. I wonder if there will be much um, enforcement of having to have a medical reason to get marijuana once we have this dispensed in Mississippi? Well, I think there will be. Uh, it's a great question, but uh, you know, there is a way to register. It's already up. If you go on uh, uh, the website, uh, you can register and get um, information about how to get a medical marijuana card if you have certain conditions. But you have to get a doctor's uh, 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 certification of that condition. Um, I, I think it will be in, enforced. But um, what's interesting, Liz, is that you know, because federal law still prohibits uh, sale of marijuana, that creates a, a real issue for the states that, that have legalized it, like California and Colorado, because those uh, uh, you know, businesses that are legal in Colorado and California are illegal federally, and it makes it hard for them to use the banking system. and and uh, to take advantage of federal tax deductions, believe it or not, because of the tax law. So hopefully we can get all that sorted out. Number two was littering. Littering is a crime throughout the United States, and fines involved can be quite large, but it doesn't seem to stop huge numbers of people from doing it. We had someone on autocorrect from the uh, Mississippi Department of Highways, and he says it's a horrible trouble along the highways, especially for the mowers, because if the if some piece of big litter, uh, like a car part or something, is just thrown out and their mowers hit it, that can be very dangerous for the operators. And if it shoots it out into the highway, uh, you know, it's not pretty. Uh, I, Mississippi, we're not your mama. You know, it would behoove everybody to pick it up. And the number one most frequently broken law, according to some website I found, was underage drinking. According to Students Against Destructive Decisions, about 26% of the under-21 crowd uses alcohol at least once a month. That's about 10 million people. If I, if I can make one comment about that, and, that's, and I'll add this to marijuana, I think part of the problem is sometimes we criminalize things that maybe we shouldn't criminalize. And I, the drinking age was 18 when I was in college, so you didn't have a lot of college students arrested for underage drinking. I mean, it create, sometimes the law creates the problem. I think that's happened with marijuana. We, we've incarcerated so many people over uh, marijuana. You mentioned it's, it is the, uh, probably the most arrested drug offense. Um, and if we decriminalize that and decriminalize and, and lower the drinking age to 18, let's accept what it is and, and do a lot of education on drinking. Most European countries, Israel also, uh, um, I remember my first time in Israel, I was 15 and was astounded that, you know, that I could drink beer there uh, because 
okay, and then it was no big deal. So I think maybe we, we over uh, legalize, over illegalize things sometimes. We want your calls to come in. This is going to be a call-driven show, so give us your uh, opinions on what you think, what laws should be enforced better, or you think people should pay attention to the law better. Email us your questions. Our address is legalterms at mpbonline.org. We're kicking back a little on the first day of summer and talking about what laws we wished were enforced better. You're listening to In Legal Terms on MPB Think Radio. Think of MPB. Need to get rid of your ride? Donate it by calling 877-MPB-4-CAR. Need to have some work done on your truck? Listen to AutoCorrect Thursdays at 10, Saturdays at 11. An MPB license plate reminds you that MPB is with you wherever you go. Go to your county office and ask for an MPB car tag. MPB and cars, better together. Hi, I'm Ryder Taff, Portfolio Manager at New Perspectives, a fee-only financial advisory and co-host of Money Talks. Each week, we take your personal finance questions and tell you about a money topic we hope you find helpful. Money Talks can be heard Tuesdays at 9 a.m. on MPB Think Radio. Podcasts can be found on our website, money.mpbonline.org, or on your smart device's podcasting platform. You're listening to In Legal Terms on MPB Think Radio. Professor Richard Gershon is our expert host. I'm Liz Gill. We do hope you'll subscribe to our podcast, or you can find all of the MPB podcasts on the website mpbonline.org slash radio. This morning, we're talking about laws we wished were enforced or laws we wish people would abide by a little bit better. We've had some serious ones and some kind of silly ones. Let's go to Hattiesburg and find out what Sam has to think. Sam, thanks for calling. My pet peeve is that people refuse to participate in jury duty. I don't understand why people have such huge complaints about the legal system but refuse to do their part to make it better. Thanks. Professor Gershon, what do you, what's your opinion on jury duty? Well, I, I totally agree. It's part of our civic duty. There are reasons that why people might opt out. Um, if someone, for example, uh, is a uh, they got they got their own business and they they will not uh, make money unless they can run their business. So uh, people people who are in that position, I do opt out. So there there are, you know there are excuses uh, that to opt out. Just not showing up is not an excuse. You know. Um, um, now, anyone, uh, you know, because of COVID, I think that that became more of a concern, and courts were a little more lenient. But totally agree. I've been on juries before. Um, I was always surprised when I was actually selected. Um, but uh, it's it's actually part of our civic duty uh, to 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 serve in that capacity if we can, and if, if, if it's not going to uh, create great hardship. All right, and I will have in the show notes the date that we had for the jury duty show. We did a show about jury duty, and I'll have the date of that podcast um, on the information for this show. Let's go to Pascagoula and talk to Brother Daniel. Brother Daniel, we're glad you've called into in legal terms. Today we're talking about which laws we wish people would follow better or were enforced better. What's your opinion? 
good morning, good morning, my sister. Good morning. Listen, um, you know, I deal with a lot of young people right now. I counsel. I've been to a lot of funerals um, from different cultures and uh, race in our in, in, in our coast, you know. And, uh, you know, we all bleed one red. You know, we bleed red. That's it. But what I'm finding out is we're trying to cut a lot of rules that would save us as young people ourselves. You know, when you talk about alcohol, and we know we're trying to get this weed thing going, but uh, we got to remember, when we take away so many rules and laws, we are hurting our children. Because what we grew up on and what protected us from going and doing 20 to 30 years is now putting up, is now because they've gotten so lenient and so... Well, it's cute. Let them go ahead and drink. Let them go. We, we've seen a lot of kids leave parties that they were minors that shouldn't have been drinking, and they're not here today. You know, so I, I don't believe we need to cut laws. I need We need to encourage our children to follow the laws that are out there, jury duty. That's your civic duty. Everyone needs to follow these these laws on alcohol, drugs. I know everybody, some people want to get high. I know you want to do this and that. But you, you, you got to remember, we got to respect one, one another. And by having a unity in a strong Mississippi, we got to follow the laws. Look what happened with people that didn't follow the laws. We need to work together, and we need to increase. Make sure the kids understand what the law is to smoke, what it is not to smoke, uh, uh, drinking. I understand you want to get a drink, uh, but if you're out there and you're partying and you're driving a heavy vehicle, a vehicle that can kill, we need to have these laws for responsibility purposes. That's that's what I believe in. God bless. Thank you, Brother Daniel. We're glad that you've called in. And one thing I want to make sure everyone in Mississippi and everybody who hears this, be a part of the process. We've got primary runoffs next Tuesday. Be a part of our system. If you like a law, you know, call up your representative, call up your senator, tell them that, you know, this is something that's important to me. Or if you feel like a law needs to be changed, let them know. And, you know, if you're really passionate about consider running for office. Uh, Professor Gershon, do you have a comment? I just I, I want to say I appreciate I appreciate the call I really do and I, I think that that goes back more to less about the law and more about um, education and also uh, parents I know my in my family and my religious tradition we had wine for all of our celebrations and I was young I mean my first my first drop of wine was when I was eight days old that was part of the religious ritual but um, and so my family I just got, grew up with it it was not a big deal and so when I went to college it was not a big deal and not something that I felt wow now I'm free to go and do this because my parents won't care I mean it was something that I was educated about and um, so and I knew the dangers of it because I was educated about it and I just think that's something that we need to have conversations about Yes, alcohol and drugs are and can be dangerous, but criminalizing them and, and criminalizing 18-year-olds for having a drink rather than um, allowing universities to, to kind of regulate better uh, that drinking that goes on a campus, because it does, whether it's legal or not, um, I think would be, would be better than, than creating criminal records for a lot of, a lot of these students. We're taking your opinions on what laws you think people should follow better, what laws you think should be better enforced. Professor Gershon, we've kind of been light with, oh, people need to use their turn signal. People need to park in only one parking spot. But we've also, there are also some serious things that you thought of. What is some other laws you wish people would abide by? Well, this is, this is a tax one. But you know the, uh, and, and I'm glad I'm glad we talked about um, some uh, you know uh, thoughts about the, the elections too because I think it's important that people participate in the elections. But but tax exempt organizations, 501c3 organizations, should not participate in or intervene in, including distributing of statements, any political campaign on behalf of or in opposition to any candidate for public office. That is the federal law. And so that includes 
you know, me as Richard Gerson, I can I can say I will hope you vote for somebody. But as the, the University of Mississippi should not promote a particular uh, uh, political candidate, neither should churches or synagogues or mosques uh, as in their official position by their leadership. And that's the Kennedy Amendment, uh, the Johnson Amendment, excuse me, that was uh, part of Section 501c3. Texas and organizations are given uh, the ability to collect money that is uh, charitably deducted by their the donors. They don't have to pay tax on that, but they're also not allowed under federal law to promote a particular political candidate. And I know it goes on. And so it's really uh, something that I, I, those organizations should probably lose their tactics of status over, in my opinion, or not in my opinion, but according to the law. Well, and in honor of you, but also I, I feel this in my heart, I wish the tax laws could be enforced better. And I'm not even talking about loopholes. I'm talking about collecting. There was a recent NPR news story that estimates $600 billion in taxes will go uncollected this year because the IRS doesn't have enough people or technology. It needs to enforce the existing tax laws. We They have antiquated systems. They don't have enough employees. If we funded the IRS, then we could collect so much more tax revenue. Absolutely. Well, it's that. And also, if you know, let's face it, it is the honor system, too, because there are over 200 million of us taxpayers, and there are very few members of the IRS, right, you know, uh, you know relative to that. So um, it seems like uh, it, it's it's up to us to report fairly. I have, my idea has always been let's do a tax lottery, right? Where uh, you one taxpayer's uh, social security number will be drawn, and they win, you know, ten million dollars. But their return is automatically audited, and if it's anything's incorrect in it, they lose that ten million dollars. Not that compliance would step up tremendously, but you know, it really is. It's on us. To, I mean, you know, uh, the things that uh, a lot of that is not collected because people are not frankly honest about. It. Uh, their tax returns. And if you really believed that, you would need to contact your representative to let them know you wish that was a law. We're talking today about laws that we wish would be enforced better or laws we wish people would abide by more. We would love to take your questions by email. Our address is legalterms at mpbonline.org. We are discussing what laws we wished were enforced better. And, you know, we've mentioned a few traffic laws. So I'm going to suggest a whole podcast about driving pet peeves that I think you might like. We'll tell you about it next. This is In Legal Terms on MPB Think Radio. find autocorrect helpful especially on coach charlie's tip of the week listen to our podcast with me coach charlie melton on any podcasting platform or on the mpb public media app Thank you for being part of In Legal Terms. If you've missed any of our program, you can listen to the whole show on the MPB Think Radio YouTube channel. You like, subscribe, click the bell to be notified of any new shows that are posted. It's also available on the MPB Public Media app. Our host is Coach, I mean, is Professor Richard Gershon from the University of Mississippi School of Law. I'm Liz Gill. We do want to remind you at 11 a.m. Central Tuesdays, following our over the air broadcast, you can hear Southern Remedies, relatively speaking, with Dr. Susan Buttress. Now, autocorrect. 
which is heard on MPB Think Radio Thursdays at 10 a.m. and Saturdays at 11. We had a little fun, silly show on auto pet peeves, driving pet peeves, and that was on April 25th of 2019. Some of the comments were the police speeding without their blue lights on, turn signals passing on the right, pulling over too soon after passing. That goes to that tailgating we talked about earlier. Uh, Overly tinted windows, texting while driving, not watching out for motorcycles, and high beam lights. Everybody who's ever driven has got ideas about driving uh, laws they wish were better enforced or people would follow better. Well, absolutely, and uh, and by the way, thank you for promoting me to coach. I, uh, that's on, on site. <laughs> yeah, really, uh, on a university campus, that's the highest title you can achieve. Uh, much more than more professed professor, but uh, but um, yeah, no, I, I I agree, and I you know a lot of it really is. Let's just you know we're we're not the only ones out there. Uh, whatever it is we're doing, I have always said if we if we kept our promises, we wouldn't need lawyers, and that's true. And part of our promise is to drive reasonably and follow the laws but also uh I, I, can i can i follow up on something i, I said about um, about uh, religious organizations uh, real quick religious organizations are free to talk about topics of the day i mean that's not you know from the pulpit or wherever it's the only thing that they're not allowed to do is participate in or intervene in i'm reading right from the statute including the publishing or distribu- distributing of statements any political campaign on behalf of or in opposition to any candidate for public office. So as we're in election cycle, you know, if, I, if my advice, if I were to be, and I've been asked to advise uh, nonprofit organizations before, is don't write a letter uh, from the pulpit with official letterhead or from the, you know, for, on behalf of the church supporting a particular candidate because that will violate that law. You can talk about topics of the day. You can, I mean, there's no no limit on free speech there. It, this is, in order to get tax exempt status, you got to follow that rule. So I think it's, it's one that's regularly broken. We have another call. Let's go to Hattiesburg and find out what's on Jimmy's mind. Jimmy, we're glad you've called in to In Legal Terms today, where we're talking about what laws you wish were better enforced, or you just wish folks would uh, abide by the laws better. And what's your question or comment? Okay, well, it's, um, my, my comment is not so much on laws that should be enforced or could be enforced better. My comment applies to laws that make absolutely no sense and should be changed or should be applied with common sense. And our case in point is on the 17th of this month, the state Supreme Court just upheld a uh, conviction of a guy that was sentenced to life in prison without parole for marijuana. And that... I mean, it was under habitual offender, but that makes absolutely no sense. When taxpayers is going to have to pay to keep this man incarcerated for the rest of his life, if he got children, the taxpayers going to have to pick up the tab of, of, of food stamps or welfare or Medicaid on it. it. That just don't make no sense, especially if when alcohol is the most widely abused drug on this planet. Marijuana is a plant, and I understand that it's illegal, but but sentencing like that don't make no sense, make absolutely no sense. Justice is not served there. Thank you, Jimmy. We're glad that you participated in our show. And we've also done a show on um, laws we think are, are silly. So, Professor Gershon, do you want to have something to say? Hey, Jimmy, I, I really so appreciate that comment, and I know that our MacArthur Justice uh, Clinic, and we just had uh, Cliff Johnson on a couple of weeks ago, they, they worked on uh, trying to deal with some of those uh, mandatory sentences, which, which really don't make sense in certain applications. So we appreciate that comment. All right. I found another website, yet another website. This one was called Laws You Probably Break. So uh, gambling at home. Ooh, so uh, all those folks who do um, poker games, those are technically illegal. 
Yeah, I, I, I bet you. I bet you that you've done it, uh, and, that, and I probably break the law by saying that. But I totally agree. I mean, I, I you know, you have friends over and you play, you know, poker, and the most you lose that night is you know five dollars. I mean, that's still technically illegal. Other things are breaking curfew in your area. Now, I uh, I haven't had kids in a while, but for a while there, Jackson had a under 18 curfew law. I'm not sure if they still have that, but I guess different places might have a curfew law. Texting while driving. That's, that's, that's a very serious law to me. Me too. And I, I don't know how people do it, frankly. I can't text while sitting. Um, so, I mean, you know, just trying to sit still and do it. My children laugh at me about it. So, I, you know, it's just, I, uh, that's a dangerous one. You see people doing it all the time. More laws you probably break. Folks driving without a seat belt. Folks breaking the speed limit law. I think, yeah, it seems like if you do drive the speed limit, you're endangering your life because everybody's whizzing past you so fast. That's true. Definitely try. We say to you drive the drive the flow of traffic is probably your best bet. One of the one of the laws that I. I guess if I could retroactively wish we could enforce better were our civil rights laws, the the laws that had been passed, you know, since 1865 or, you know, the, the laws that were passed to give rights to expand rights from the white land-holding males in the 1700s, everything that has done to expand that I wish they had been enforced better. I can't. Wouldn't it be interesting to see how our our country would look like if we had had civil rights laws that were enforced better? Absolutely, and I think it started, you know, with uh, segregated schools right after emancipation, right after really Reconstruction. Um, I think put us down a path where we uh, continue to impoverish one. Uh, segment of society based on race, and and, uh, and that, I, you know, I think that's something we're still having to deal with as society, and we really need to deal with. But you're absolutely right. We've got another call. We're going to Mobile and to talk with Lisa. Lisa, we're glad you've called in to in legal terms today. What's your question or comment? Well, I have a question. I mean, it just seems like people seem to now think it's okay to threaten and harass people constantly, whether it's online or in person. Are there not laws against that? Well, that's that's a great question. There are uh, you know that online etiquette is is something that we've seemed to have lost. And and I will say, if you go on Twitter uh, or Facebook, um, you know it's there's for somebody to uh, troll you and, and say nasty things about you is not unusual. That's probably not illegal. But if they make actual threats uh, that seem like you know that they're credible threats, and those those can be uh, um, you know against the law. So if you feel like somebody's making threats that they're going to carry out, um, I, would, I would report those. Uh, Twitter, I know, tries to prevent uh, certain behaviors on Twitter, but a lot of that goes back to it really is up to us to kind of treat each other better. Yeah, I, I hate it when you, you hear like a— a person of authority who takes a stand on an opinion, and I'm saying whether I agree or disagree with it, but then they get death threats or their family gets death threats, and sometimes they're pretty specific about it. That uh, that that makes me feel very sad, you know, especially if I'm against the person that someone who believes as I do would make that kind of threat. It it takes away from the position and yeah i'm with you lisa we need to be more civil towards each other and uh last one professor gershon i think you were going to say something about uh government officials well you know i I do think government officials should uh yeah i mean i I think they well first of all i I think on, on on twitter they should be uh, more considerate of the people who don't agree with them. Uh, you know, it, we've gotten to a point now where I read uh, tweets of some of our government officials and they attack 
40 percent or more of the voters here just for disagreeing with them and, and create labels. So that, yeah, that's just a, more of a, I, I wish they wouldn't do that. Um, it doesn't represent uh, the position very well. But I also think government officials should um, uh, be more careful about uh, conflicts of interest uh, and, uh, and really understanding what conflicts of interest are and also uh, taking um, gifts and uh, uh, you know, uh, donations uh, that uh, sway, especially sway their vote uh, from organizations, lobbies, things like that. I, I think that, that to me seems corrupt and, I, and our government officials should represent us and be, serve the public and not serve themselves. A lot of them seem to enrich themselves uh, by their public office and that seems inappropriate to me. I was astounded, but I don't think I've heard much more about <clears throat> all the officials who suddenly quit investing in something in January of 2020 and started investing in other companies, and then the pandemic happened, and poof, they their stock and investments grew by millions and millions and millions of dollars. Well, happy first day of summer to you, Professor Gershon. Make sure you keep that sunscreen on and stay hydrated. Absolutely. I, I've had my second melanoma. Now I'm going to start using sunscreen. So <laughs> oh, <goodness. good> to <laughs> go. <laughs> Thank you so That's much, true. Charles Arnold, for answering our phones. We've got an intern here this summer at MPB. Thank you, Jay White, for being our board op. And for Professor Richard Gershon, who's wearing sunscreen at the University of Mississippi School of Law, I'm Liz Gill, who is very well hydrated. Join us next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central for In Legal Terms on MPB Think Radio.